Hi all, welcome to Azure Content. So in this video, we are going to learn how to monitor copy activity runs in Azure Data Factory pipelines. So we already know that in order to move the data from source to destination, the activity that we need to use in ADF pipeline is called copy data activity. So depending on our requirements, we choose the source and sync and the configurations in copy activity. So how would we get to know that copy activity has completed its job as per our configuration and expectations? Whether the source and destination data are in sync or not, or if there is any row that has been skipped by the copying the data, is there any file out of 10 files? If there is any file which has been skipped by copying the data, or how much capacity has been used in order to copy the data, and which particular step was in queue for the longest period of time. So we usually want to see the data insights of the copy activity execution details. So we will learn the same thing in this video. So let's go ahead. So in order to monitor our pipeline or activities, we first need to go to the monitor section in ADF and there we will get the pipeline runs option. So here in this tab, we will land up and we will see all the pipelines that has been run in this particular time frame, right? So once we open the pipeline that we want to monitor, we would get this view. Okay. So here you can see the activities that are present in the pipeline would be displayed. So in this example, only one particular activity that is copy data activity has ran successfully. Since you can see the status is succeeded. So in order to get more insights about the activity execution, we need to open this sunglasses option. This is also called details button. So once we open that, we would get this kind of image, which will be having each and every details about the execution. So what is the source and what is the destination and how much data has been read from the source and how much data has been written into the sync. All these kinds of details we will be able to see. So let's discuss about these things in details in ADF pipeline. So let me go to the ADF pipeline. So here I have a copy activity which is supposed to move the data from one container in my Azure Data Lake storage to another container in the same Data Lake storage. Okay. So my source is ADLS input. And here, whatever file name I will give while debugging, the same file will be copied into the destination folder. So destination folder does not yet exist. If you see this sync option in the data set, I have this uh, output folder name, which is called ADLS output folder. Okay. And in my uh, containers, in the list of containers, I do not have ADLS output folder. I have ADLS output, but there is no such folder called ADLS output folder. So it will on the fly create this folder. And the expectation is whatever name we will be providing while debugging the pipeline, it will copy the same file in the ADLS output folder. Okay. So out of these uh, files, I will like to uh, copy india.batsman.csv file. So I have parameterized this pipeline in such a way that it will ask the country name and the player type. Okay. So to know more about how to parameterize the pipeline and the data set, I would pin up one video link which can help you understand this concept. Okay. So for now, this pipeline has not been published yet. You can see this has a dot which means this is created but it, no, it is not published. So in order to trigger it, we need to publish, right? But if you want to debug, we don't need to publish the pipeline. So we can go ahead with debug run for now. So let me click on debug and let me give India and player type as batsman. So let's wait for this pipeline execution to be completed. So you can see pipeline execution has been started and it is currently in queued state. Now you can see it is in progress. So we can get more insights about this execution by clicking on this detail button. Okay. So let's click on that. And you can see now the pipeline execution has been succeeded. Now, if we refresh, you can see this has been succeeded. So either we can check these details directly by clicking here in the sun classes option in author tab, or we can go to the monitor tab as well, where you would be able to see the pipeline execution details of all the pipelines, which has been uh, queried or which has ran, which has been executed within this time frame. You can change the time frame as well. 
within 24 hours there are two pipeline execution of the same pipeline you can see that but if we go to the triggered option there is no results found because we have ran by using this debug option if we would have published then we would be able to trigger that as well and the monitor section would have showed the details of the triggered execution in this triggered tab as well okay but meanwhile let's go to the debug run and the latest run is this one so let's open that and here in the sunglasses option let's open that and you can see the source in our case is adls gen 2 and the destination is also adls gen 2 and the execution has been succeeded and this is the activity run so each of the activities will also have a run id associated with it so suppose if pipe if this pipeline would have uh, three activities after copy activity we would have a set variable activity then that set variable activity will have another activity run id but the pipeline run id of all the activities would be same so entire pipeline has this particular pipeline run id so that will be same for all the activities present in this pipeline because it is the pipeline level run id but if you open this you will get the activity level run id okay so now we can see all these data within the properties present here and these properties whatever is appearing is not static so depending on your configuration depending on the source and sync depending on the file types the properties that you are seeing would also change so suppose if you are trying to copy 10 files and one of the files has been skipped then there you would also see one option called number of files skipped but in our case that property is invisible because that scenario does not apply here so let's discuss about the properties that we are able to see here so this is the size of the data that has been read from the source and if you see this this is the size of the data that has been written into the sync so there is no discrepancy between the size of data that is read from the source and written in the sync so the same amount of data has been read and same amount of data has been written in the sync so hopefully there is no inconsistency and if you want to know about what this particular property means then you can click on this i button and this will give you the information regarding the property so this is the to total amount of data retrieved from source data store including data copied in this run and data re resumed from the last field run okay and as we have only copied one particular file you can see file thread is one and files written is also one and peak connection is also one there is no other copy activity that is parallelly running when i run this particular copy activity and the copy execution time is 26 seconds so so it took exactly 26 seconds to finish this execution of moving the data from input folder to output folder and you can see the throughput is 68 bytes per second which means the rate of data transferred calculated by data read divided by copy duration is 68 bytes so the more is the throughput the better is the performance of copy activity and we can see the start time at this particular time the execution started and how many dius has been used in order to perform this execution so dius is nothing but data integration units so don't worry about it we will learn about this in details in upcoming videos and the number of parallel copies that has been used is one okay so these things are related to the performance of copy activity so we will learn about this in upcoming video and then if you see this duration option which is 26 seconds for the entire pipeline to get completed and if you expand this this is actually the drill down of each of the steps performed by the copy activity and what time it took for each of the steps so out of 26 seconds copy activity was in queue for 22 seconds and the entire transfer of data happened in two seconds and two seconds was maybe the buffer time after finishing the job so basically most of the time was spent in queue uh, due to several factors like maybe integration runtime availability was not there or something and then transfer only took two seconds okay if there are millions of data that you are trying to copy then you may try to analyze how much time it took for which particular file which may help when you are dealing with production data and then data consistency verification we have not enabled in our configuration so it has not been verified automatically uh, so it is fine so basically for our example since we have just copied one file only these particular pipe properties we are able to see 
But if you want to know what are other properties that are present within the copy activity execution details, so you can check out this table. I will provide the link of this table so you can see each of the properties and their description is present in this table. Okay, so you can see one of the properties is called files skipped, but we were not able to see that because none of the files has been skipped in our case, right? So all these properties are present and you can see the uh, details of the properties as well. And then one important thing is sometimes when you are trying to copy large amount of data, you may see some performance related tips here at the top and it might look like this. So here you can see performance tuning tips, right? So sometimes it may appear it actually indicates that what are the bottleneck identified by ADF during this execution and it tries to give you tips in order to improve the execution by increasing or decreasing DIUs or parallel copies. So this might be helpful sometimes. And of course we can get all these details in the JSON format by clicking on this output tab. So this is the input arrow and this is the output. You can see that when I hover it, it is called output. And if I open that, you can see few of the details. So this is the data read, data written, files read, files written. All these details are present in this JSON. So if you want to share the details to someone else, you can copy this JSON and, and simply share it. So it has all the details, how much time it took for the transfer, what was the duration and all other details, whatever we have seen just now. So I hope you find this video helpful. So that's it for this video guys. Please stay tuned with my channel and please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you.